Yes, good morning, uh, students, and welcome to the class of Cambridge. Today we have with us here Anuradha, ma'am. Good morning, Anuradha, ma'am, and a warm welcome to you, ma'am. Thank you, Janvi. Good morning. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, students, to give a brief about Anuradha, ma'am, she is a co-founder and managing director of Career Fit 360, a career analysis and customized training solutions provider, started in Kochi by women entrepreneurs. Anuradha Ma'am has a B.Tech uh, in Electronics and Communication Engineering and has more than 17 years of work experience in the fields such as IT, Training and Development and Counseling. She holds a postgraduate diploma in Counseling under the Continuing Education Program by Government of Kerala. They started their firm in 2012 and their team has trained 20,000 plus professionals and students through their various programs. Yes, ma'am. A warm welcome to you. And ma'am, please uh, start the session. Thank you, Janvi. A very good morning to all of you. Before we start, uh, Janvi, I see a message on the chat box which says video playback is not working. Do you want to look into working. that? It's working, ma'am. It's working. It's working. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So uh, a very good morning to all the participants. I'm very excited uh, about this session on goal setting and uh, would it will be really helpful if all of you can give your responses whenever I prompt you for a response. Please go ahead and put your query or your response on the chat box. Before we start this topic, can I uh, have some, you know, maybe a, a quick icebreaker? Can each of you mention what is your favorite holiday destination? It could be your favorite place or your dream holiday destination, but I would like to see some responses from the participants. Put it on the, please put it on the chat box. Your dream holiday destination. Yes, students, you heard the query. Please mention in the Q&A section what Ma'am has said. So we are talking about goal setting, right? And what are we every day? What are we aspiring for? What is it that we are working or learning towards? We all want to make some money, go and you know enjoy the vacation in some beautiful location, right? So can all of you or at least a few of you can give me some responses as to what is your dream holiday destination? Ma'am, they're mentioning. OK, somebody says holy places, Manali, Paris, Kedarnath, Lakshadweep. Very good. Brilliant. Great. We'll just spend a few more seconds. Okay. Yes, Niagara, wonderful. I had the opportunity to visit the Niagara Falls. It was like a dream come true. Yeah, Las Vegas, San Francisco. Great, okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes, so now this, this is what we all have, right? All of us have different goals. Uh, of, you know, when I asked you about a holiday destination, you definitely have a goal. But when it comes to a career goal, professional goal or a personal goal, do we really know what is a goal and what, how do we set a goal? How do we achieve our goal or what is the path that we take? That is what we are going to see today in our session. So I'll quickly start uh, with the presentation. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you all of you who have responded. Uh, now we'll uh, pause it for a while. I'll be definitely asking more questions and would love to have the same kind of interaction. Interesting. I also see somebody saying spending time with family. Yes, yes. When when people start, uh, you know, when you've already worked for a while, uh, most of the people would feel that even spending quality time with your family is like, you know, a dream or a, a dream destination altogether. Thank you very much. 
yes um, so we'll pause this uh, you know uh, I, i would request all of you to stop responding now and we'll move on with the presentation today we are going to see what goal setting is what are smart goals and how to set and achieve personal as well as professional goals so what is a goal can i see one or two responses when when we say what uh, when we ask about a goal what does a goal signify to you sai can you mention what does what does a goal mean or what does a goal look like or what what how do you define a goal any responses anybody would like to comment okay somebody says mars is their dream destination right so uh, i think we will not have too much of time to wait for responses so i'll just move on a goal is a target towards which we focus our efforts and energy every person at different point of time or different point of stage in their life they will have different kind of goals for example a student in class 10 the goal would be successful completion of class 10 with excellent marks okay a person who is in the class 12 again the goal would be to successfully complete that particular phase and you know come out with flying colors a person who is doing a graduation their goal would be to complete their graduation and get a job so there are different kind of goals for each person at different stages in life some could be academic some could be professional okay when it comes to careers you have a different kind of goals some could be personal and social as well so for every individual there are goals there are also team goals okay an example a few examples of goals that can be set in different spheres spheres of life is explained here somebody says i can become uh, i will become a state level badminton player by 2022 right you you are you defined what you want to do become a state level badminton player you have mentioned by the year 2022 so the timeline is also mentioned right that is one goal i will learn to play the guitar in the next 6 months that is another goal so that could be a a personal goal you want to play the guitar it you may or may not take up playing guitar as a profession but still you want to pursue it as a hobby you want to take it to the next level you want to be a professional player in the next 6 months that is what the goal means another person says i will sign up at a gym and work on my physical fitness this is something which you know we hear very often uh, especially people you know the by the time they become you know adults 20s 30s 40s everyone is excited about fitness goals right okay so goals are specific and challenging yield uh, goals are specific and challenging yield meaningful results okay so here what you see in each of these statements there is something which you want to achieve and you want to start putting focused efforts and energy to achieve that particular goal now if goals set are measurable it will help us to evaluate our performance and understand our capabilities better so as you can see in that example the person says i'll become a state level badminton player by 2022 all he says is i want to qualify in the state level championships and i'll start practicing but he has not specifically mentioned he whether he'll go and win a title okay but at the same time there is a number there is a timeline attached to it there is a specific period by which the person wants to achieve the goal now when whenever you know the studies show that whenever a goal is set it has to be a smart goal very often you feel people saying that hey, i want to reduce my weight uh, you know i have to do something uh, in one month at least i have to reduce a few kilos that is just this particular statement is just an aspiration i want to reduce weight i want to do something about my physique that is just an aspiration now how will it become a goal when does it become a goal when you specify 
what is it that you want to achieve? You want to reduce your weight by two kilos within two, three weeks time or a month's time or two months time. That is when you become specific about your goal. So I think most of you students would have heard what are uh, about smart goals. Can somebody say what is a smart goal? Can I get a few responses on the chat box? What is a smart goal? I'll just take a few more seconds. Yes, show the path to achieve, opportunity to prove our strength, objectives we want to achieve. Very good, good responses here. I'm sure somewhere either in school or in your college you would have heard about smart goals or can somebody say what does each of these acronyms stand for or what those each of those letters stand for s m a r t is an acronym it's a smart goal each of those letters stand for a particular uh, a word very significant word can somebody list out that? Yes, someone says achievable, achievable. Yes, so that is the A in the SMART goal. Effective goals, a goal for which we act smartly with constant effort and perseverance. Yes, goal will be achieved in SMART ways. OK. Can somebody say what is the S? What does the S stand for? For a few seconds, it was there on the screen. OK, so while you know we cannot wait for too long. Yeah, I see that uh, some of you have already mentioned the. Uh, detail, uh, you know, elaborated the word. Yes, Irfan, you're right. Specific, measurable, achievable and time bound. OK, R is not yet. Uh, R, yeah, R is for realistic. Somebody says realistic, relevant, time bound. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Right, so a smart goal is something which is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time bound. In the statement that we saw earlier in the example. The person has said I'll become a state level badminton player by 2022. OK, so he has not mentioned whether he'll be the number one or you know he wants to get into the top five when it becomes you know when you add more the more of these kind of details specifics or specific details into the goal it becomes a smart goal okay so spe being specific is what is the goal where or when or how are you going to achieve it that is what is what comes under spe being specific Second is measurable. Now, there is a popular saying that something which cannot be measured cannot be managed. Any task, whenever you're doing something, unless there is a metric attached to it, it becomes very difficult to find an improvement in it. So when you set a goal, it is important to make it measurable. As I mentioned in the earlier example of a physical fitness goal, you have to specify how many kilos of weight or what is the. Uh, you know, if you want to reduce your uh, the circumference of your belly, what is that specific detail that you want to achieve? So being specific, mentioning uh, the clear goal has to be very pretty. I mean, you have to be very careful there. Next is measurable, uh, which we mentioned uh, measure being specific about the number of kilos there. There is something which you can which you can actually measure on a weekly or a monthly basis. The third is achievable. Now you cannot say that you will reduce five kilos in a month. Right somewhere you have to be very, uh, you know, it has to be an achievable target. Don't do something which is which is going to tax your body, which has become which is, which is going to become very stressful. So the goal also has to be achievable, attainable. 
and it has to be realistic. The second, the next part is being realistic. Okay, something which cannot be achieved or something which is uh, human, not humanly possible. That is something which you have to avoid. Make it a re achievable, realistic goal. R in some cases also stands for relevant, being relevant. Now, when you are doing a fitness goal, make sure that all the aspects to it are connected to the particular goal that you want to achieve. When it comes to careers, if a student is preparing for a JE exam, you know, you have the popular entrance engineering entrance uh, exam called the JEE. So when a student is preparing for such a competitive exam. You can also, you know, make sure that you set a relevant goal. Is your goal the, the goal that you are going to set? Is it going to help you achieve your bigger dream or your target? That also is very important. The last uh, part of the uh, smart is smart goal is T, which is stands for time bound. Every goal, unless you make it time bound, we are not going to achieve it. So here uh, in the earlier examples that we saw, the student says, I want to become a state level player by the year 2022. Imagine he's setting the goal in the year 2020. There are two more years. He's got the time to prepare. It is not something which he can do in just six months. It is going to be a gradual journey. So you have to start setting smaller goals. Uh, you know, become a district level, then do more inter district championships and then, you know, start attempting state level championships. So this kind of a gradual progression has to be there. So a smart goal, as we saw, it is it is very uh, it is very important that you make the goal statement specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time bound. Now, whenever you set the goal, it is also important that you have certain important guidelines to be followed when you set the goal. So some of the important uh, guidelines are self audit your goals. OK, so uh, as we mentioned earlier. Once we have set a goal and you know how uh, we've already defined what is a goal statement, you have to start doing a self audit. First is you are going to see specifically whether uh, the goal statement satisfies the conditions that we mentioned earlier. OK, are, are we making it specific? Is it a measurable goal? Is it realistic time bound? And is it is it relevant to, uh, you know, get into your professional career or personal the need that or personal uh, target that you are going to achieve? Is it relevant towards that? All these parameters have to be audited and verified. Second is visualizing your goal. Now, neuroscientists and several studies have actually shown that visualizing goals have a direct impact on actually achieving the goals in real time. For example, many of you would have, you know, I, or at least a few of you would have sat through visualization exercises. OK, um, imagine a, a student, uh, an athlete, especially this is very popular in sports. Uh, young athletes who are, uh, you know, aiming for the Olympics or aiming for an international uh, record event, they are asked to close their eyes and visualize actually achieving that particular goal. So, for example, you become the the fastest runner, the hundred meter uh, mm -hmm. race. Okay, imagine achieve or sorry, visualize yourself actually being the uh, the first. Uh, the gold medal winner in that particular race. So you are asked to close your eyes and visualize and do this as an exercise every day. And some of you would, would have heard about law of attraction. There are so many studies which actually talk about the correlation. So the more you visualize the frequently and uh, the repetitively that you visualize your goal, achieving your goal actually impacts the, uh, the real time achievement of the goal. The third guideline to be followed is make goals manageable. How do we make a goal manageable? That is by breaking down the goals into smaller steps. Now, we all know that an athlete 
he cannot become a gold medal winner overnight. So this is actually a journey. He or she would have to start based on whatever is the goal that they want to achieve. They'll have to start, you know, months or years in advance and start by winning small, small, uh, you know, the smaller races and uh, then move on to the bigger events. So making goals manageable is also something which is directly correlated to the achievement of a goal. Understand challenges beyond your goals. Now, very often it may it may happen that you have planned to achieve a goal. Suppose you have put a plan for six months. Again, going back to the example of an athlete. You will find that probably the player is very systematic. He's very consistent. He's taking care of his health and doing the regular exercise continues all this on a very regular basis. Sometimes things may go you know, beyond our control. Imagine the athlete faces an accident or has some kind of a damage, a physical damage happens. Then it might happen that all your plans will go uh, haywire. So whenever these kind of challenges happen, which is beyond our expectation, it is very important that you still stay resilient, you know, make sure that you do not lose your heart. You do not give up on the goal, but you are able to take adequate steps to overcome those challenges and move forward. Another important guideline is also to celebrate each step accomplished. As a student, you know, if you are a class 12 student, you would have anyway started your preparation from the beginning of your 12th standard academic session, right? So uh, a person, a student who is consistent in his studies, you will find that the initial, probably the initial class tests or the internal assessments, you know, you will start preparing. You might, may not be successful in the first one or two tests, but gradually you can make sure that you are achieving, you started achieving your goals and you are able to meet your targets. So a, a student can, you know, a student who is probably setting a target uh, of achieving 95% marks in the class 12 board exam, he can start with making sure that all his tests, he is consistent and he, you know, he can start achieving probably 80% marks. In the next test or in the half yearly exam, he can ensure that he goes up to 85 or 90 and similarly, you know, go forward with the goal. Right, so moving on to the next slide. Now, while we are talking about personal as well as, you know, professional goals, Please give me a minute. I hope the slide is visible to all. Yes, ma'am, visible. So while we talk about personal and professional goals, a personal goal can be something like as we saw earlier, someone wants to use the gym, someone wants to make sure that uh, they have a fitness goal. Now the same person may be working as a professional in an IT company. So the professional goal would be to uh, achieve a, you know a 5x or a 10x improvement in his salary. He may want to uh, achieve a higher salary or he may want or he may want he may be looking for a, a raise or promotion. Another professional could be looking for an on-site opportunity where he gets to move to a foreign country and work for his company. So there could be different kind of professional goals. It is important to consider personal goals along with your professional goals. It, because one is the professional goal is going to help you in your uh, overall development in your career at the same time to always bring a balance in your work and life it is important to have personal goals and unless 
we make sure that we, unless we nurture our personal goals, uh, this is also going to impact our professional, uh, the, the way we achieve our professional goals. So for example, a student uh, who is preparing for the exam, he can also have some personal goal like uh, pursuing a hobby or pursuing some kind of a musical instrument. These could be some of your personal goals. The personal goals can in enkindle the professional goals. They can incite passion and drive your professional goals. Likewise, professional goals can contribute towards the achievement of personal goals. So as I said, while a student is preparing for a competitive exam, it is also important that they stay fit. They have proper hours of sleep and you know they have a, a very good state of mind. And only when you are making sure that you are staying healthy, can you actually work towards achieving your professional goals as well. Now, when it comes to a workplace, in most organizations, the goal setting is a conscious and deliberate activity taken up on a regular basis. Imagine an organization of, say, about 500 employees. It is very important to have goals for the different departments, right? So you will have a sales department which has a target of uh, creating, generating the revenue for the company. You have to achieve, say, uh, a 1 crore or a 10 crore business. And suppose the company is already making 10 crore business. The goal for the company would be to achieve a 20 crore business by a particular certain amount of years. That is called a high level organization goal. Now, this organization goal has to be broken down into different levels, that is department goals, team goals, and individual goals. So typically in a workplace, the goal setting starts at the top where the organizational goals are set. And this actually you know, will be broken down to smaller achievable goals at the department level. Say, for example, the finance department or the sales department, the HR department. And similarly, from each department, it will come down to different project teams or different teams of individuals. And finally, it will be broken down into the individual goal. So now you can take an example. As I said earlier, the organization has a goal of achieving 20 crore business okay, in, in, a, in a particular year's time or two years time. The, the, this will be actually converted to a department level goal where the sales department will have to start looking at new new markets. You know, they'll have to increase their sales by a particular percentage. So this also becomes a, a department level goal. Now, when the sales team has to improve its performance, it will be actually looking at, uh, you know, increasing the number of people in their sales team and the number of calls they make or the number of visits they make to the different potential customers. So that becomes a team level goal. And from there, the individual goal will be assigned to each individual employee who is part of that particular team. So this is typically an example of a cascading goal that we also uh, already saw. The organization's business goal is translated into divisional, departmental and team goals. This ensures that all the team members support and understand their role in achieving the goals of the organization. Now, there are different type of uh, goals. So just to make sure that all our participants have understood what we have covered so far. I will just uh, mention an example and I would like to have some answers from the team. OK. OK, so. Uh, now, since we have already seen what is a smart goal, I would like to ask each of you to craft a sentence 
where you can mention what is going to be your smart goal in whatever stage of life you are in. Uh, as an example, I can tell you if you are a class 12 student and you are taking up a particular course right now, can you put a, a specific measurable, achievable, relevant and time bound goal statements on the chat box? Either you can use a personal goal as your uh, example, or you can also use a professional goal. Can we have some answers on the chat? OK, Sai says OK. Students, please do respond. Ma'am, we are getting responses. Two responses we got. Great. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, somebody says buy a PS5 in 2025. Okay. I'll get a rank in CMA December inter exam. My goal is to clear exam, CMA exam, and to work in an in a PSU to achieve stability over the period of years. I'm pursuing CMA inter. I want to clear CMA within two years. To become a CMA within one year and I'll complete my syllabus by October to get two month. Revision for December attempt to get top 10 A all India rank in CMA final. OK, OK, very good. I think I see a lot of uh, uh, clear ex uh, you know, examples coming up. So buy a PS5 in 2025. Now when we start with that statement, uh, Ravi, OK, I, I thank all of you, Ravi and Divisha, all of you who have responded. I thank you for the comments. So let us look at one or two examples to see whether it is a smart goal. Now, Ravi, can I ask you what are you doing currently? You want to buy a PS5 in 2025. Can you tell me? What stage are you in? Or I'll put it as a question for reflection. If Ravi is somebody who's already in a organization and who is working, if he's earning a salary, then it becomes a achievable or a realistic goal. If Ravi is a student of two inches, not easily achievable or probably uh, you know we have to see whether he has got the time another uh, so 20 we are already in the middle of 2024 so we have about one and a half years by that time whether he's going to be able to get the salary and make a savings and buy the ps5 that is the question okay so that is the way you do a self audit of your goal so here we are actually trying to do a self audit of each of these goals <coughs> I hope you're getting the point, uh, Ravi. Divisha. Divisha says I'll get a rank in CMA December inter exam. So Divisha, you have to now you've set a goal. You want to get a rank. What is the rank? Are you aspiring for the top 10 ranks or you know you want to be in the top 10? You want to be a topper first rank holder. That is when you become very specific. OK, I think somebody uh, 
here actually had started uh, mentioning that. Okay, so being specific means become a the you know come into the top five ranks. Okay, in the CMA December inter exam. So there is a timeline. She is already mentioned in the December CMA exam, and she is very specific about getting a rank. So it is uh, that is specific. It is measurable. It is achievable. Provided you have already started working towards it. If you are making uh, systematic efforts every day, if you are, if you are spending the stipulated time in your preparation, yes, it is definitely achievable. All the best to you. My goal is to clear CMA exams and to work in a PSU. There, Arya, you have uh, you have mentioned the goal statement, but there is some amount of ambiguity. It is not specific as the smart goal that we have been just talking about. So, clear CMA exam. OK, that is specific. It is measurable. Uh, you can you, you know whether you've passed or not. Now to work in a PSU, probably there is a cutoff in a PSU. There may be several people, you know, several CMAs who are going to apply for the job. So unless and until you clarify, you know what rank you want to fall in and you want to, what kind of PSU you are trying to attempt, that also makes the goal statement more specific. OK. Uh, so getting into a PSU and achieve stability over the period of years. Is that is, is that a right example for a smart goal? When you say over the period of years, you have not been, you know, it is not time bound. It can be two years, it can be one year, it can be five years. So that is the uh, that is the way you have to correct it. I am pursuing CMA inter. I want to clear CMA within two years. Sai has mentioned the goal. He wants to clear it in the time bound. It is it is time bound. OK, it is um, it. Yeah, it, it, it sounds to be achievable. Another thing which you have to also remember is are you giving too much of uh, too much of time? OK, sometimes we find that the goal is set. If it becomes too easy to achieve also, we will become redundant or we will we will actually give very less importance to achieving the goal. It, it should not be too easy. There has to be challenges and you have to be regularly monitoring your performance. To become a CMA within one year, OK. Uh, there is a response there, OK. There also, please, as, as we already discussed, put your SMART goal self audit hat and start auditing line by line, word by word. Have you made it very specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time bound? I'll complete my syllabus by October to get two month revision for December attempt to get top 10 AIR in CMA final. I think the it, it the name is anonymous, but that there is a lot of thought which has been put in there. OK, you you have broken down the goal you want to achieve the first, uh, you know, get into the top 10 ranks and you have backward done a backward planning. So you, you've, you've tried to make sure that you have two months time to complete the syllabus and do the revision. Excellent. Pooja stays, uh, says start my own business. Pooja, you have to be more specific. OK. Um, I want to qualify CMA within 2026. OK, I have to earn one crore before my 20, uh, age 25. OK, Amit, here again, uh, you have to do a self thorough self audit. Try to break it down. If you want to start earning one crore by the age 25, look at where you are right now. What is your age currently and what what will you do? There is definitely there's no magic wand which you can just wave and get your one crore. You have to be very systematic. You, it has to be a planned activity. There should be you have to break it down into achievable chunks. I ma'am, is there any activities of Cambridge? In energy Vidya. Um, can we take that question towards the end? OK, ma'am, I'll take it. Ma'am, I'll take it. I'll respond. Yeah, yes, yes. And I want to become a auditor of the company. Kiran says he wants to become an auditor of the company. OK, so there is a goal that is just still a very high level goal. Kiran, I want you to be more specific. Uh, if you want to become an auditor or, or do a backward planning, 
see what you are currently. Have you got the qualification? What are the necessary qualifications required to achieve uh, to be achieved to become an auditor? And if you have to be an auditor of a company, you definitely need work experience of several years. Do that planning as well. OK, and to be a CMA in one year and be financial independent. Yes, so thanks a lot for every thanks a lot to everyone who has given the responses. Each of you have set put a goal. Some are realistic, some are still, you know, it looks very vague. So please go back home today. Sit down and write your goal and see whether you are being smart. It has to be specific. It has to be measurable, achievable, realistic and relevant and time bound. So with this and with whatever examples which we have just gone through, I think all of you can do a self audit. Start constructing the statement properly. And once you have the goal statement ready, Try and make smaller, you know, that is like that is going to be a long term goal or, you know, that is going to be your bigger goal. Try to make it into smaller achievable chunks so that right from today you can start planning activities to achieve your goal. So with that, we'll also now go back to the. Presentation. There can be several types of goals that an employee at an organization can set for himself or herself. Productivity or performance related goals. Now we are assuming that all of you, you know, in one or two years time, you will be uh, joining different organizations and working as a uh, CMA professional. So the productivity or performance related goals are are the goals which are directly linked you know directly connected to the organization goal so if you remember we talked about a company achieving a 20 crore uh, turnover so from with that uh, directly linked to that your each of you will get a productivity or a performance related goal and what will it be within say uh, a month or within a quarter you will have to achieve a certain target okay now if you are doing analysis of certain uh, you know the the balance uh, ba see uh, i'm sorry the balance sheets of different companies if you are doing an analysis of that or if you're doing a profit and loss analysis whatever task has been assigned to you as a professional as an individual that you have to make sure whether you're becoming productive say suppose you have spent one month in the company have you you know have you become faster and quicker in resolving the problems are you being efficient day by day or are you still working like a beginner? You know that is definitely is not expected. So whenever a company is putting you in an organization in and giving you some tasks, they expect that after say one month or two months, you will become faster and more efficient. And you will start taking up additional responsibilities so that that kind of goals that is what is called a productivity goal or a performance related goal. Performance related goals also can mean reducing the defects in your whatever service deliverable that you are doing. So if you if you are supposed to send a report uh, and you know the, your manager finds that there are a lot of errors in the report, your performance will be you know the, there will be a evaluation of the performance and they will tell you that you know next time when you submit a report, please reduce the number of errors, reduce the number of back and forth uh, you know reviews and changes that happen in the document. That becomes a performance related goal. Uh, individuals can also have financial goals, right? People, um, uh, you know, an, an employee can set a goal saying that today I'm earning, a, a, you know, a six or a five figure salary. I want to make it a six figure salary by this particular time. OK, so financial goals are, you know, there could be financial goals set and uh, typically every employee after working for one or two years in an organization, you will definitely do an audit. You will see whether you are being uh, you know, paid or you are being given the kind of incentives uh, the, as per the industry standards. And if you find that you are not being compensated, you can definitely ask for a raise or you can you know, make sure that you go back and uh, evaluate your own uh, performance and see whether you're being taken care of that uh, appropriately. So individuals can set financial goals. Compliance goals. 
compliance goals are those which are uh, you know some things like statutory or mandatory activities that have to be done in an organization and whether you are complying with the guidelines standards set by the organization individuals can also set up learning goals so for example uh, you're taking an uh, you know a financial advisor or a person who is in the finance industry today there are a lot of tools softwares and tools that are available uh, some are paid and some are uh, freely downloadable so it is very important for an individual to stay updated understand what are the new softwares and tools that are available as you all know uh, today everybody is talking about ai and uh, you know some of the uh, artificial intelligence based interventions that are happening in every industry so are you aware of all that are you learning are you learning uh, things offline and you know are you making yourself updated with the industry trends trends that is important set set uh, learning goals for yourself and even while you are in a profession it is very important that you continuously learn new things you know because organization is also looking at employees who uh, are not just doing what they are told to do but if they can take up some extra responsibilities if they can learn new technologies and try and apply it in their job and improve their job performance employees will employers will definitely appreciate those kind of employees the last one mentioned is the behavioral goal now behavioral goal is something which may very often employees tend to overlook now today you might be a student of class 12 or you might be a cma student uh, a graduate undergraduate when you take up a profession and when you go into the career you will find that after one or two years you will start up taking additional responsibilities you will have employees working under you so when you set up a team when you start working with other individuals there are certain soft skills that are important the way you communicate to others the way you manage a team uh, way you lead a team way you make sure that the work is done all this is a part of something called soft skills so your behavioral goals are going to be linked to the soft skills if a person today if a person is not communicating very often if he is very silent player in the team the company or organization your manager will tell you to set a behavioral goal for yourself he or she might tell you that um, hey why don't you join a toastmasters club or why don't you join some kind of a public speaking workshop where you get an opportunity to communicate uh, you can do a lot of mock sessions you can do some undergo some trainings and improve on your communication so similar kind of you know behavioral goals behavioral uh, skills are also part of the goals so above goals are, are set at the beginning of every fiscal year both by individual employees as well as by the teams and these goals are reviewed periodically to ensure progress so from the you know the few years that i have spent in the industry what i have understood is every employee it is very important that we set goals for ourselves there may be goals be which are being uh, already given upon thrusted upon us from the organization which will be our performance related goal but we also need to have certain learning goals and behavioral goals and all these put together will definitely impact the overall development of your uh, of the individual so with that we come to the end of the presentation now i will wait for a few questions and we can have some interaction thank you so dear students i am waiting if you any of you have any queries please feel free to type it on the q and a so while we wait for uh, the questions to come you can either type your query or you can also give 
some feedback on what we what you have understood or what are the takeaways from this particular session? Anything which you know has become very strikingly important for you, please do mention that. Kiran says it's very clear. Thank you, Kiran. If anybody wants to share one or two uh, goal statement examples, smart goal statement examples, you can still do that. We can probably do an audit once again. Thank you, Monica. I'm glad that it has helped you. How to improve communication skills practically? Uh, communication skills will, you know, you can improve only by doing more and more practice. Now, today you have a lot of tools again, which actually help you in, uh, you know, correcting yourself. For example, simple things like you, you can just uh, read about a specific topic and switch on your camera do a live recording. So when you are recording, you can actually use your hand gestures. Uh, you can just stand before the camera and talk to the camera. Uh, you will actually know, you know, how much of preparation has happened. Are we able to speak in a flow? And, uh, you know, those, uh, the, the modulation, how is your modulation? How is your body language? These things you can do a self-evaluation. Similarly, uh, Practice, practice. I think that's the only way you can improve. Start with your friends. Start communicating with your friends. Talk to your family. Uh, and uh, similarly, also catch hold of one or two people, probably who are professionals who are working in the industry, so that you know they'll also be able to correct you with their expertise and experience. You, Nazar, Don. Okay. Divisha says sometimes even after setting a smart goal, we are not able to achieve set targets in some days, and that makes us feel bad. What to do in that situation? Okay, very good question. Thank you, Divisha. As I said, goal setting, you know, it's it's a very important task, and uh, very often it can happen that you know, as I told you earlier, sometimes you may not achieve. This, the, the whatever you have planned for. For example, if you have set a plan that you know you should study for three hours or four hours or maybe uh, six hours per day, it may happen that one of the days something comes up unexpected or you don't feel well, you're not keeping well and you're not able to put in that uh, amount of effort. Please don't stop it at that. Please don't feel dejected. OK, this is very normal. It can happen. It is important for you to be resilient. You need to rise from that situation. You can also, you know, what you can do is compensate for that on the coming days. You can put an additional half an hour on the rest of the days so that you can, you know, make up for that goal. Okay. So just because you have not achieved it once doesn't mean that you stop there. Please do not give up. Keep doing. And as long as you are persistent, as long as you are, you are consistently working on it, you will be able to achieve the goal. Another important point to be noted, Divisha, is break down the goal into smaller chunks. Now, if you, if I, I know some of you mentioned that you want to become a rank holder. Now, being a rank holder, you have certain criteria to be met. 
always do a study. Always do an as is evaluation. Where are you right now? Are you a average performer today or are you an above average performer today? OK, see how much of Delta is to be covered. And then you make sure that you are uh, you know, moving towards the goal. So definitely. Uh, you know you, you will have you can. There is nothing impossible today in this world. It is possible through. Regular periodic uh, consistent activity. So make sure that you are. Uh, you know, breaking down the bigger goal into smaller achievable goals. Why, if you're not able to achieve, do an analysis. What went wrong? Why were you not able to achieve? Or have you, you, you know, you set a goal for 90% and you achieved 80%. Even then, please appreciate yourself. Learn to pat yourself. Give yourself a reward. Maybe go watch a movie, watch a, watch a TV series, or have a chocolate. Make sure that you celebrate that small achievement and that will actually uh, uh, you know, encourage the brain or it actually stimulates the brain to achieve the goal the next time and you know, consistently. I hope that answers your question. Smart goal is surely going to help in the near future to set up a perfect goal. Thank you, Vishwas. That goal setting process was very helpful. Okay. Yes, thank you, Abhijit. Thank you very much. Over to you, Janvi. Yes, ma'am. So, ma'am. Uh, uh, Janvi. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Do you want to take up that other question? There was some question about the Cambridge material. Yeah, I have replied to them. I have replied to the student. OK, OK. Then we can continue with the next topic if uh, there are no queries. OK, all right. So I'll open the next presentation. Yes. Can we start now, Janvi? Yes, ma'am. We can start. Okay. So the next topic that we have is on leadership, which is again another unit of soft skills. So before we go on with the presentation, just like we did earlier, I would like to see some responses on the chat box about a leader who has influenced you. If each of you can just type, uh, you know, some it could be any person, some some leader who have whom you have uh, read about or seen on TV or read about in newspapers or somebody who has influenced you in your life. Could you mention the names of a few leaders on the chat?
request everyone to participate. If it's a popular leader, you can mention the name or if it is somebody who has uh, whom you have met during your school or college life, you could mention you know, where you have met them. Who is that personality? Ratan Tata, yes, Dr. Abdul Kalam. Good, brilliant examples. Thank you. Abdul Kalam, yes, Elon Musk. Great personalities, it's true. Thank you. Wonderful. It's it's good. So good to see that you know you have all chosen some real visionary leaders. Rohit Sharma, APJ Abdul Kalam. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for the responses. Wonderful. So that itself, I'm sure, has triggered some thoughts in each of your minds about who or what is leadership and who is a good leader. So in this unit. We will learn about the qualities of a true leader, about assertiveness as a behavioral trait, and the importance of problem solving and decision making skills. These are all part of leadership as a, you know, as one of one or two of the qualities of a true leader is to become an assertive communicator and also find, you know, definitely in your leadership journey, there will be problems. So problem solving and decision making skills are very important skills to have for a leader. What is leadership? Leadership, yes. Ma'am, your screen is not visible. The, the PPT is not visible, ma'am. Sorry. Yes, ma'am, visible now. Thank you. So what is leadership? Leadership is the ability to inspire growth at an individual and organizational level, even amidst an environment of uncertainty. It means working along with people and prodding them to do better. It entails the humility to carry people along with you, listen to their ideas and voices and creatively channel the energies around you towards meaningful objectives. So at this point, I would like to actually share a, a story. I think all of us will be interested to learn, uh, listen about stories, right? So this was a time when the SLV-3 launch, you know, the satellite uh, launch vehicle SLV-3 was being launched by the uh, Indian uh, ISRO, Indian Satellite uh, Research Organization, Space Research Organization. So. Um, this was a time when Professor Satish Dhawan uh, was the leader and he was actually uh, the, the project leader was Mr. Abdul Kalam. He was a scientist at that point in the ISRO and the SLV-3 launch was supposed to happen. And as you all know, the, the all the necessary steps were being taken. And this was sometime in the year 1980, if, I, uh, if I'm correct. So during this time, when the uh, all the preparations were going on, uh, everything was being set, and the first, uh, you know, in the first stage, the countdown happens, and the first level uh, completion took place in the first few seconds. Everything was fine, but in the second stage, the uh, the launch did not happen properly, or the the next second stage completion did not take place properly, and the uh, the rocket actually drowned into the uh, Arabian Sea in a, uh, yeah, sorry, in the into the Bay of Bengal uh, in a few seconds time. So almost like 300 odd seconds later, the entire project became a failure. At this point, Abdul Kalam, sir, he mentions in his autobiography that this was a very, very critical stage and this was a, a very important project. And after all these years and uh, months of hard work, when the failure happened, it was a very, very crucial moment for him. He was completely disappointed and he was unhappy or sad that he had actually, uh, even to his seniors and superiors, he was feeling very embarrassed and disappointed. So he felt that probably all the press persons, everyone, media persons are going to now come and bombard him with questions. He was really concerned how he's going to face them, face the press and uh, other uh, members at that point. 
So for the press release, uh, you know, just before the press release, his professor, Mr. Satish Dhawan, he came, he was his superior officer. He came and spoke to Mr. Kalam and he said, uh, you don't worry, I will take care of it. And Mr. Satish Dhawan actually responded to the press persons. He said that, yes, the project, uh, there, uh, there has been a failure. We are going to look into it. All the technical proceedings will be done. We will do a complete overhauling uh, of the entire process and we will come back to you. He had mentioned a stipulated time and exactly at the very next date that was fixed for the launch, the project actually happened successfully and the launch uh, became a completion. So in this story, I just want to uh, you know, give you an example of a good leader where the leader actually handles the situation even when there is a failure. Uh, you know, he can handle the situation, uh, make sure that the team is unaffected. The team does not lose its energy and lose its uh, hope to work towards it, but gives them the hope, gives them the inspiration and motivation to work towards it. Another aspect which Abdul Kalam also shares is when the, or in the consecutive year, when the launch became successful, uh, Professor Satish Dhawan actually invited Abdul Kalam to come and face the audience. At that point, he wanted to give all the credit and all the uh, importance. He wanted them to be in the spotlight. He wanted Abdul Kalam and his team to be in the spotlight and gain the applause and the appreciation. I hope this story you know, gives you some idea of how a good leader can be. So moving on with the presentation. This example clearly shows how the leader is able to inspire growth at an individual level. He is walking along with the people. A good leader is somebody who does not, uh, who does not actually, uh, you know, goes always ahead or behind, but he's along with the people. He walks along with them. He always makes sure that the team is coming along with them and gains the, uh, whenever there is an appreciation, whenever there is a success, you pass it on to the team and when there is a blame, when there is criticism, the leader takes it upon himself and he makes sure that the team is well protected during such situations. Now, qualities of a good leader. Here are a few qualities of a modern day leader. Listening skills. Now, when it comes to effective listening, it is very important that a leader listens to each and every individual in the team listens to each of your concerns. OK, a good leader is somebody who can inspire confidence. There is uh, never a superior or a subordinate mindset. A good leader is always someone who encourages you whatever level you are in the team. He will look at you, treat you as an equal, give equal importance to all the ideas that are coming in and you know, give that kind of a trust. OK, so the trust is very important when only when there is trust, employees employees will feel safe to open out, uh, come out with their ideas. Similarly, openness to lifelong learning. A good leader should be somebody who is willing to learn from people and situations around them. So in the earlier example, if you see the professor was, you know, he was very clear. He wanted to give an opportunity for the participants, you know, to come back. They went back and did a complete root cause analysis. They went back and studied what went wrong and they were able to come back with the solution and come out with a successful venture in the very next uh, year. So this kind of a learning, uh, the leaders also need to be open to ideas. It's not that you are a leader, so you know everything. It can never happen today. Uh, there are a lot of changes that are taking place every day. So the leader also has to be able to accept new knowledge, new uh, learnings that are coming in from his subordinates. Be ready to hear, listen to them, willing to learn them, learn from people and situations around them. Similarly, a good leader is someone who seeks knowledge and upgrade themselves in technology. As you all know, today we are in a very highly dynamic environment. As we as and when we are speaking, new developments are happening, advancements are happening all over the world. So as good leaders, we should make sure that we are updated. 
and only when the leaders are up to date and staying current and trendy with their learning the teammates all or the team members will also be inspired to be like them some other qualities of a good leader are the ability to take risks a leader must experiment with new ideas and allow people to think creatively if you look at people like elon musk or you know even rohit sharma as an example you would know that there were several situations where they were under pressure and they were probably they had to change their course of action suddenly they might have to come up with a new strategy and you know so th those kind of experimentation has to be there a leader has to be bold enough to take risks experiment with new ideas and allow people to think creatively and only when we take risk and only only when we we are getting into some uncertain phases at some point will there be new technology new innovations happening uh, and very often you know what we also find is some leaders you know they take a risk but if if it fails they become dejected and you know they they lose all kind of hope that is also something which a leader should not be uh, you know he, he he or she cannot get into cannot get into uh, depression or cannot get discouraged by a failure as we said earlier resilience is something which is very important we all during the covid have actually experienced the situation right several companies had to be shut down several leaders uh, several employees lost their jobs many companies went into losses and several organizations had to be closed because they did not have the uh, you know th their situation was really bad during the covid but there were also situations where uh, the employers or leaders were able to pivot to other areas okay when they found that if they are in an industry which is you know very much getting affected or impacted by the covid situation many businesses went online okay so people who were selling things uh, physically had to shift to an online mode they probably set up an e-commerce platform and started selling their goods and and services through on uh, online and that became a success so we have to take risks maybe we are not uh, uh, you know equipped with all the skills required but at that point think smartly engage people who can actually help you in the digital transformation and make those kind of changes so ability to take risk is very important as a good leader the next is about self awareness good leaders are aware of their own strengths and shortcomings now this is a quality not just for a leader but for every individual it is important that every day we take a stock do a stock taking you know do a self inventory find out you know where you are how well you are performing as an individual if you have certain shortcomings please be aware make sure that you are taking corrective action going by the example of you know the students who uh, some of you who gave uh, certain examples earlier if you have set a goal it is not just important to have the goal there on a piece of paper but it is also important to see where you are in that goal journey okay so every day evaluate yourself see what are your strengths are you progressing towards the goal or if you have some shortcomings make sure that you are taking corrective action the same is applicable for a leader self awareness is very important and self awareness is not just understanding uh, yourself and giving a feedback to yourself you can also take feedback from others for example a leader a leader can talk to some of his colleagues some of the leaders in other departments he can take some examples from them or he can take feedback from their clients okay the clients can give you customers can give you feedback about yourself your subordinates can give you feedback your friends family relatives and also can also give you a feedback so make sure that you collect the feedback look at your uh, the, the positive and the negative feedback that has come negative feedback is not something to be afraid or uh, unhappy about but it is always a opportunity for correction create a cordial environment atmosphere in the organization respect people better and not be filled with false pride 
Excuse me. The next quality of a good leader is the spirit of collaboration. Again, when you go back to the example of a sports, a, a, sport, a team of uh, cricket players, you know that great leadership requires a spirit of collaboration, both with internal and external stakeholders. So today, uh, if you take the example of a, a, a sports team, who are the internal stakeholders? <clears throat> internal stakeholders are your teammates and the external stakeholders are the sponsors, the team, uh, the companies that are sponsoring you, your home team or the home organization, which is taking care of your uh, performance every day is also looking at your performance, monitoring and giving you the rewards and uh, compensation. So there are internal and external stakeholders. So a great leader is someone who actually looks at a collaborative effort. Whenever a team is performing well, whenever there are good results, you will find that a lot of people, uh, you know, there will be a lot of people commenting, appreciating and coming forward to support you. But whenever there is a, a challenge and, you know, you, you also need to make sure that during the challenging times also you bring in all your internal and external stakeholders, make sure that you give them an awareness of what is going wrong and how you need to take corrective action. And you will find that when you collaborate and work with others, the results will be always much better. Partner with various groups in society to help organizations understand how best they can be served. Another typical example of collaboration in an organization level is the, uh, the, the society contribution that an organization does. For example, you would have all heard about CSR. There are several companies, uh, the, the important uh, to, the top Maharatna companies or public sector organizations whom we see you know around us and very often you will find that these organizations are also taking up activities beneficial to the society as part of their CSR contribution the corporate social responsibility so uh, you will find that some organizations they make sure that the the waste water which is going into the, the rivers or, you know, going into the drains is being treated properly. And, you know, th that is one way of, you know, making sure that the company or the organization, you know, uh, impacts positively to the society. Sometimes organizations take care of orphanages or might take care of a school nearby, a government school or a economically uh, a school which is having economical challenges. They may fund the school, they may fund the activities of the school and make sure that the students are uh, well taken care of. There is proper uh, funding given to the uh, educational facilities. They probably enhance the, the laboratory and the other facilities in the institution. And you know these kind of activities also take place. So all this is a part of the collaboration that happens. And it is also important as a good leader, as a good uh, organization, having great leadership, it is important that you look beyond profitability. It is not always, you know, some some actions you may have to take which may not give you profits, but it will, in, in, it, the profit is not in terms of numbers or uh, revenue, but the profit is the impact, the positive impact to the society that you create. And I for sustainability. Now, just to understand how many of you are, uh, you know, still connected with me, I would like to see some responses on the chat box. How many of you have heard the word sustainability and what does it mean to you? I see some very good responses about uh, the leaders. Great, thank you. Yeah, so now, just to understand how many of you are uh, connected with the topic. What do you mean by sustainability and what does it mean to you? Can we have some responses? Divisha, Sai, Nisar, Urjit, Ravi, anybody wants to comment? 
I'm sure you're hearing the word sustainable, sustainability, uh, sustainable development goals. All this is very common these days. Sustainable development. Yes, Soumya, what is what do you mean by sustainable development? What does it mean to you? Any responses? Using the resources wisely. Excellent. Thank you, Asfreen. Afreen. Using resources wisely. Yes. Any any more comments? So as you know, today the the United Nations has actually uh, defined certain goals uh, as called as sustainable development goals. And these are being the, these are the goals which are being given to the different countries who are part of the UN for uh, you know making sure that the country is also developing and all the uh, the activities economy that is you know all the uh, activities that are going towards different construction towards towards establishing uh, either education and you know making sure there is proper uh, medical facilities given to the you know people in the country all these uh, different uh, activities are being measured and monitored by the united nations as called as sustainable development goals so every country is free to take up some of these goals like uh, you know, quality education, um, water, making sure that there is water and uh, food and water and shelter for their resource, uh, you know, for their uh, population, making sure that, that there is quality education being given. Uh, are there proper cities being developed? Is there a uh, you know, is there an environmental protection that is happening? You know, what is the climate? Uh, what is the response of the society towards climate? Response of the country towards their uh, the, the climate change and climate action that we call it today. So these are all part of the sustainable development goals. And if if you want, you can just look up at the uh, uh, on the internet after the session on SDG goals of the UN. So this will give you some idea. Yes, so we are getting responses, ability to maintain or support a process continuously over time. That is sustainability, optimum utilization of resources, making environment clean, environment friendly practice. Excellent. Uh, effective utilization of resources, less harm to the environment. Very true. Optimum use of resources, saving for the future. Absolutely. And sustainable means long term use of available resources. Exactly. Now, you and I have been on this earth for say probably 20, 30, 40 years, some of us at uh, different uh, stages. Now, how did we, you know, the uh, uh, making sure that you pass on this earth, the world, the environment around you in the same format or at least in a better format to the next generation. That is what is very, very important. And that is what we are talking about when we uh, listen to, I mean, when we hear the word sustainability means to have self resources to encounter long run threats. OK, I find some very good uh, long definitions also. Thank you all. Thank you very much. So yes, so as a good leader, you know, if you are uh, at the leadership of successful organizations, an eye for sustainability is very important. Is is your organization as a whole, you know, contributing to the uh, environmental pollution? Are you causing water, land or air pollution by the activities that you are doing? OK, how best can you use the available resources efficiently? Are you minimizing on you know, cutting off trees or, or uh, are you contributing to the global warming? These are all the audits and metrics that you need to start looking at now onwards whenever you are uh, at the top level of an organization. So you will find that many of the companies, uh, in fact, most of the companies if they have to um, um, make sure that their compliances are met, a lot of audits are connected to the environmental uh, protection as well. So environmental audits are becoming mandatory for a lot of, especially the manufacturing product development organizations. So as a leader, uh, it's, it's important that you have an eye for sustainability. Next is a vision. When you when you talk about vision, 
uh, this is something which is long term. A visionary leadership is a person who is able to visualize and articulate a new feature for the organization. A visionary, uh, visionary leader will also have the ability to understand people, their capabilities. He can make sure that there is a compelling future for the organization. He has to look to the future. He has to see what are the future demands going to be uh, from the different customers and make sure that the company is geared up for the performance in the future. And also a visionary leader, somebody who has the ability to reward and recognize new initiatives. As I told you earlier, a leader is someone who has to be definitely, you know, look at the upcoming trends. He has to take the proactive step to see what is going to come up in the future, stay ahead of the, uh, the trends, current trends, understand what could be the uh, kind of innovations and advancements that can happen in the future and make sure that the company is ready to or geared up to accept those kind of changes. Another important quality of a leader is effective communication. In the example, in the story that I mentioned earlier about Abdul Kalam, the communication between the, the leader and the manager, the manager, Mr. Satish Dhawan, and the leader of the team, Mr. Abdul Kalam, that was very, very important. There was a very effective communication, even though there was a failure, the leader was able to make sure that he is not uh, becoming very critical. He is not uh, scolding his teammates, but he is giving them the courage and he is telling them that I am here for you. I am there to support you. It's okay. A, a failure can happen, but we just need to make sure that we uh, do not stop at that, but come back with corrective efforts. So have that empathy. Have an understanding of their of your people and their aspirations. A leader also has to understand listen to people, give uh, give importance to the verbal as well as non-verbal communication. Very often you find that in a team, there may be members who do not always vocalize or uh, spell out their requirements. They may be silent, they may be introverted, or they may not be very good communicators, but their body language conveys a lot of things. So a good leader is someone who can also Look at the verbal as well as the non-verbal communication. Identify what is, uh, you know, what are the communication styles of different individuals and work according to that. Another important aspect is about being aggressive, assertive or submissive. Now, these are different styles of communication. Some uh, leaders could be having an assertive communication. That means they are very firm. They are very clear what they want. But at the same time, they also convey it in a very positive way. When a leader becomes aggressive, we always, you know, allocate a negative connotation there. And aggressive, the word aggressive means that, you know, they they are insisting on something and uh, they may demand for a action. So this aggressive communication generally is also connected with uh, a higher volume. You know, you raise your volume or you become, uh, you change your intonation, modulation. And also you have a very firm, you might have some kind of gestures which indicate that you are asking for a, uh, a yes or no answer or you are demanding for a response or a reply. So that uh, the aggression generally um, people or leaders who take an aggressive mode, it is not always beneficial. You will find that there are certain situations where you have to be aggressive, but not all. A most commonly uh, resorted to uh, approach is being an assertive communicator. Similarly, submissive is also not a very, uh, it's not, it is, it is useful in some situations. Submissive communication is also important, but People have to understand the situation. You will have to change your communication style depending on the situation. Now, leadership and assertiveness. Here, uh, I just want to probably take a moment to get some responses from each of your lives, okay, individual lives. Have you had a situation where you know someone spoke to you aggressively? and whether you know you you did you benefit out of it or not 
can some of you put your comments on the chat? So I'll just repeat my uh, statement again. I know that many of you have heard about assertive communication and aggressive communication. So can you recall a situation where you had an aggressive communication with someone? It could be a teacher, it could be a family member, or it could be a friend or someone in your class, or it could be somebody in your workplace. Did you have an aggressive communication with someone? What was the impact and how did it go? Can you put some comments on the chat? What happened during that aggressive communication? Or maybe you had a, um, a situation where the aggressive communication was helpful for you. Any any such situations, comments? It happens every day, says Erin. Yes, my professor talks to me aggressive for bunking the class. After that, Roth, I never thought of bunking. OK, yes, when we are in a bad mood, you become aggressive. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Dharani, Erin. Yes, so communication, you would have often found that. When uh, you know as the, the position, depending on the position and the, the situation, sometimes you will have to make your communication uh, not just assertive, but aggressive also. Very good example shared like professors. If if a person is not coming to class on time, the first time or the second time the leader or the professor might be assertive. They'll be calm. They will be submissive. Sometimes they will not even talk about it. But if you are consistently not uh, coming to the class on time or your bunking classes, there will be a point where the teacher will become aggressive and they will also take some kind of strict measures. Probably you lose, you lose your attendance. You will not meet the cutoff and that will be really painful. So aggressive communication is also is a is an op, uh, approach which is taken when you have no other option, right? But at the same time, as a leader and when you are working in a team and when you want to get things done by your team members, very often uh, assertive approach is always come you know better than an aggressive one because when it becomes aggressive communication, there is a slight uh, discomfort, right? So as Ta Tanya has mentioned, when we are in a bad mood, OK, then uh, you know it, the, uh, aggressive communication doesn't work. It, it, it will not serve the purpose. It will actually backfire or it will actually uh, damage the relationship also. Are you say somebody slapped me and punished me every time? So this especially this has got a neurological impact. Sometimes when when a person is very aggressive and uh, you know you get these kind of uh, punishment or uh, beating and all that, this can actually affect the psychology of the person. So its psychological impact would be that the person always feels disappointed or demotivated. This results in low self-esteem to the other individual and uh, you know you start doubting your own capabilities. So this is something you know Ayush I uh, I'm, I'm, I, I empathize with you. Please move out of those kind of situations. Please make sure that you don't uh, get into that situation uh, again uh, because physical violence, resorting to physical violence or aggression is not the solution. You have to do a root cause analysis. You have to sit with the person, understand, evaluate the situation and find out a solution. I had aggressive communication with the teacher impact was I was out of the class whole day. Yes, so this also is uh, a typical scenario where when you don't like the teacher, you always stay away, right? So negative impact, yes, and uh, such communication has brought, brought tolerance in me. Yes, some uh, it, it's again individual specific. Some individuals are able to understand or they might be very submissive. They will uh, take up all these aggressive uh, actions towards them and they are able to uh, move forward. But sometimes 
this lies in your mind as a regression okay this will be there as a suppressed emotion somewhere in your uh, in your body and in your mind and it can have a very uh, negative effect or impact in the future so we always uh, you know recommend being assertive okay thank you yeah somebody says please explain assertiveness yes so coming back to the presentation assertiveness is an honest and direct style with a positive and non offensive tone it is the healthiest and most effective communication style assertive people have the following behavioral characteristics so um, if i take an example just a simple uh, example of your day to day situation if a professor is suppose a professor is handling a session and he finds that you are you know regularly bunking his class an assertive professor can actually you know talk to you probably outside the class okay not in front of the rest of the people call you aside he can talk to you he can tell you uh, mr x you are not coming in my class can i understand why he can ask you what are the reasons or you can actually tell him why you have been bunking the class if there is a genuine reason behind it or if there is something which the professor can correct in his or her behavior then probably the class will become more interesting you can actually give that kind of a feedback or you know the the teacher can you know change his style these these are the kind of approaches that you take when you have an assertive communication that is one try and understand why a person is behaving in a particular way ask for reasons communicate talk to the person listen to what they are saying and if there is some gap you know try and fill the gap make sure that that education is happening both ways and this will actually sort out the situation so achieving uh, you know achieving goals without hurting others that is a part of the assertive communication another typical example could be a, a mother and a child where you know if the child is crying constantly and you know the child you know that very often children fall on the floor and you know they cry they make a big show when when they especially when they go out with parents and you know they they want a chocolate or they want a balloon they might uh, one or two times they might ask and if the parent is still not agreeing they try to put up a show there uh, through all kind of tantrums right and you might find that uh, you know the either the parents will give in to these tantrums or there can be you know there is an assertive style where the parent will ask the child to calm down don't cry tell me clearly what you want and the parent can also give the reason okay he will say he or she may say that you if you want the chocolate first of all you have to you know have let us have lunch first and then we can i can get you a chocolate or i'll buy the chocolate but you know you, you will finish your homework and then i'll give it to you so these these kind of assertives are some kind of a reasoning can be done and either the the parent can give a proper explanation and then resort to the uh, action okay so being assertive it is it is very important uh, that you calm down there is no need for you to raise your voice you can be talking in the same modulation as you are doing in a normal communication and this uh, this kind of communication actually is protective of uh, individuals rights both uh, it becomes a win win situation for the the person who is giving as well as receiving the communication they are socially and emotionally expressive assertive leaders are people who make their own choices and take responsibility for them also they ask for their needs while being aware of the possibility of rejection so as i said in the example of a teacher and a student uh, an aggressive teacher might say that i am not going to give you a pass mark in your internals whereas an assertive teacher can call you aside he can ask you why you are bunking the class if you have a genuine reason he or she can take try and make an attempt to solve the problem or he and he or she may have to take some corrective action from his side and then you know make it make sure that the communication has happened there is a proper closed closure to that particular conversation and make sure that you know he he gets a positive response from the student so the student can say okay thank you for listening to me now that uh, you know you have understood my problem i'll make sure that i also correct or come to the class on time so this can be the mode of conversation 
and thirdly uh, lastly they accept compliments graciously so while you are doing an assertive communication it is also very very important to understand that always a sandwich communication is very good what do you mean by a sandwich kind of communication start with a positive have the negatives or areas of improvement in between and again end with a positive okay so this kind of a mode when you this is typically used when you give feedback when you give feedback to an individual you start with a positive in between you talk about the uh, areas of improvement and then you again close with a positive comment so this this kind of uh, will also help in a assertive communication moving on assertive leaders individuals display the following non verbal behaviors so as i mentioned to you earlier the teacher who's uh, giving a assertive uh, comment to you they can always use a medium pitch they don't have to raise the voice as i said the volume speed need i can be medium postures when you use an open posture always you know make sure that you have an open posture you keep your arms either on your sides or uh, keep it open uh, you know like opening up uh, your hands similarly you can have gestures which are rounded even rounded and expansive today in the especially in the digital environment we are all uh, you know in front of the computers so we find that sometimes you become unaware of your gestures your mannerisms so here whenever it comes to a communication if you uh, if you are doing a practice if you can record your communication you can record your speech or a conversation in front of a camera that will actually help you understand what are the kind of gestures you are using <clears throat> if there are any gestures which are too distracting you can avoid that okay so that is uh, what you need to do about having even gestures similarly facial expression make sure that when you are being uh, when you are talking assertively you are being poised and maintain good eye contact spatial position make sure that there is a proper control of the situation you are you are aware of what situation others are in and make sure that there is a win win so uh, is there any question any doubts on the area that we just uh, described i hope uh, assertive communication is clear now Okay, so we just have a few more minutes, so let me go continue with the presentation. <clears throat> we also have one other aspect of leadership that is problem solving and decision making. So here, these are going to be tools which are very very essential for a leader. As individuals, we all know that there may be several situations where we get into problems, uh, either in your personal situation. or you have a, a problem uh, which is hindering your professional progress so you need to do problem solving and decision making at every stage in your life and this is a mental process where an individual or group of individuals decide on a course of action or an outcome based on an evaluation of the alternatives present before them okay so imagine a situation where you are going to a a different state okay suppose you are traveling you are on a business trip to a particular state and you find that the day you reach there you have just come out of the train and you find that there is some kind of a uh, a, a, a hartal or some uh, a strike happening in that particular city and you find that there are no public vehicles available so there is a problem you have reached a unknown a place you th this location is not familiar to you you do not know where exactly your hotel is situated or you're not clear about the route so you thought that you can just get down and probably call a cab but you found that let, let's uh, take an example that uber drivers are on strike strike in that particular city so this is a, a problem that you have now you need to know what are the other options so you are actually going to see the alternatives what are the alternatives you can probably look into the google map see whether there are hotels nearby where you can just walk from the station or you can actually look at whether public transport is available 
is there some bus or a, a, some kind of a car pulling that you can do okay or can you look at some of your whatsapp groups and see whether you have a person belonging to that city you know some friend who can actually give you a private vehicle so there are several alternatives right so you can do an evaluation based on different alternatives and then take a step so during the decision making you are actually evaluating several alternatives now you may you may have a challenge uh, on all on top of all this you may have a challenge that you just have one hour to go ha take a shower and get ready for a meeting so time becomes a constraint right so you may you may also consider directly calling up your client asking them to come and pick you up and you know give you the time to freshen up somewhere so these are all the different uh, things you may have to do so their life will throw you uh, throw certain uh, very different dynamic kind of challenges to you and every such situ such situation is a opportunity to do a problem solving and decision making perhaps the best way to avoid bad decisions is to use a scientific approach now when we talk about scientific approaches we are talking about different tools that can be used now in the example that i took just now define the objective what are the steps that we followed we first defined the objective we made sure what what is it that we want to do we are very clear we are collecting the relevant information okay what is the information i need to see okay there is a strike uber strike i need to be at this particular venue by this time what are the alternatives that i have now you may have certain ideas now these are ideas which came up to your mind that either walk up to the nearest hotel that is available or uh, find public transportation options or call up somebody okay so you need to see how much time is available for all these options evaluate the pros and cons of each option probably the nearest hotel is a taj now do you have the financial capability to go and take a room in that five star hotel or do you want to look for other options so evaluating the pros and cons and then making the decision this is a very important this is the way you do a scientific approach to taking decisions and now for that there are certain tried and tested tools that are available in the market one such uh, example is the uh, you know something called a ishikawa diagram or a cause and effect analysis okay so uh, before we come to that again just to, to uh, reiterate about the approaches to problem solving and decision making whenever the problem surfaces there is a you know there is always a gap between reality and expectations problem solving is the act of bridging this gap using one's logic right so as we saw in the earlier example you defined the problem you created alternative solutions and you are selecting one and when you are making the selection you are doing a decision making now not all decision making involves solving the problem but problem solving involves decision making right every time you know you might take sometimes you might take a decision and just go and uh, you know achieve your target you may not be actually solving the problem because the problem is that there is a uber strike but you know you can't do anything about it you still have to go on and go and meet your customer you have to do go and do the meeting so very often you'll find that while you are solving the problem you are taking some decisions as well now when it comes to decision making you need to make sure that you are doing uh, you, you are doing your using your creativity using uh, making sure that you get all the different ideas and taking a optimum idea or something which is really a, a, a positive idea something which actually you know is worthwhile for example there is a proper roi do you have to spend a lot of money in implementing that idea or is it going to be the the cheapest and the most uh, uh, e easiest option so you you may have to do a cause and effect analysis over there approaches to problem solving and decision making now yes this is just this uh, slide just talks about different uh, opportunities that you know we feel uh, we may face every day in our life to where we can do a scientific decision making uh, approach for example 
sorting out a problem with a gadget like a mobile phone or a computer. OK, you you are facing you are faced with a problem today. You while you are going to your work, you find that your mobile phone is not working properly. Now, how do we solve it? There are different approaches you can take. Sorting out an issue with a service provider such as a cable operator. OK, these are also situations sometimes uh, you know you may you may not be able to act on it on certain situations immediately. You may have to uh, let it wait and it may solve by itself. Solving an issue that you're facing with a troublesome neighbor. As I said, you know some things are really uh, you know urgent and important. So you you also you might have heard about this urgent important metrics, right? Some things you can't move to the next stage unless you solve the problem immediately. Some things are, are you know some things which you can wait. Sometimes you find that that time delay or the time lapse will actually solve the problem by itself. Getting errors in service bills, organizing a picnic. So um, let, let us take that example of organizing a picnic or a study trip for your classmates. Can I get some approaches to that problem or uh, you know to that uh, solution? Finding uh, finding a place for your study trip for your classmates within a tight budget. Can I get some suggestions? from the group. I request all of you to put it on the chat. So just to uh, stress upon the point that I just mentioned, we talked about different situations where we use problem solving and decision making. One example, a simple and easy example for all of you to relate is coming up with a picnic idea for the class. OK, organizing a picnic or a study trip within a tight budget. What are the different ideas that you can? Can you all do some brainstorming? Can you give me certain ideas? Let us see some ideas coming on the chat, please. You have a tight budget. You want to organize a class trip. OK, so what what are the options available? You may be in different uh, locations in the city, so that's OK. Just, just be wild. Please turn on your imaginative caps and please give me some ideas. How will you organize a study trip, a class trip on a tight budget? What are the different options you have? Museums, very good. Yes, that's a simple and easy option, right? You will definitely have some museum, museums or monuments in your uh, city. Wherever you are and most most often these are very minimally priced tickets are minimally priced. OK, trip to museum. Great, great idea. Wonderful. Any any other suggestions? Any other suggestions for a tight budget class trip? Probably, you know, even attending some uh, some event, something like, you know, if there is a fair going on in your city, some kind of uh, either a circus or it could be some uh, amusement shows, some entertainment shows happening in your city. Or, or a popular band is playing a performance. Maybe you know again uh, the ticket prices are are going to be different. May vary, but still, if it is an affordable uh, price, that would be a, a a fun occasion, a wonderful occasion for you to join together as a uh, you know as a class trip. So uh, yes, any good environment. Somebody says hill station, so we will choose a location which is underrated where there are no entry tickets. Wonderful idea, Amit. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for the great ideas. So uh, this I am also, you know, tr slowly introducing you all to another concept called brainstorming. So the reason why I, I, I wanted some suggestions from each of you is because always when it comes to decision making, you need to be open to ideas from each and every individual who is part of that decision. OK, so typically in organizations, when you have some major problem or a challenge, the leaders, they call for a brainstorming session. What they do in a brainstorming session is they put together all individuals in one room 
and they ask everyone to come out with random ideas. OK, because quantity is very important. Nobody is looking at the quality. You creatively, spontaneously come out with a long list of ideas and the leader which will actually sort out after collecting all the ideas, the leader will sort out the different uh, options. You uh, then you combine and then build up on the ideas and whatever is your, uh, you know, based on the priority and the importance of the decision you take, uh, the leader will finally take a collect decision. So they when you do the brainstorming, all ideas are given randomly and only later after the process is complete, you start segregating the ideas, looking at the you know the cost factor or all the parameters, all the criteria that has to be met and then you take a, a proper decision. So this way everyone is being heard. All the members are being uh, you know all their ideas are being heard and there is a very good collective approach. Brainstorming is a very good uh, solution for creative decision making. Very often used in companies, in projects, in uh, school as well as professional setups. Cause and effect analysis is again something which each definitely requires a little more reading uh, from each of you. Probably you can look for Ishikawa diagram or uh, cause and effect analysis. Please read up on the internet or on your learning resources. Kindly read on your uh, learning resources about this particular approach. Cause and effect analysis was devised by Professor Kaoru Ishikawa, a pioneer of quality management in the 1960s. This is a very important quality control tool. Is very much relevant today. All the companies, almost all organizations are using this for high level uh, you know quality control issues coming out with problem solving techniques and it has a methodology there is a identification of the root cause and to do the root cause analysis they first write down the problem statement and they keep on asking why why is something happening what are the you know uh, what could be the different reasons what could be the causes of the particular problem so this uh, you know, keep on asking why and keep on uh, identifying different, different uh, uh, the reasons and then coming out with solution, addressing the solution. This is what happens in a cause and effect analysis. It's a very, uh, it's it's a slightly um, advanced tool. So definitely it may not be, uh, you know, we won't be able to cover it in this one hour presentation, but I request all of you to go and read up about it. This is a very useful methodology, which all of you, uh, it will be very important for you to learn. Example of uh, how a cause and effect analysis works. So uh, one is the problem statement is high rate of absenteeism in an organization. First step is identifying the problem. So employees of most levels are absenting themselves from work on a regular basis. You find out what is happening. The, did, uh, the effect of this um, uh, you know, employee absenteeism is rampant and frequent absenteeism affects the efficiency and productivity of the organization. So then you start finding what is the cause. Discover the root cause. Why are people not coming to work? What is the nature of their work? Are they you know, finding the work very redundant? Is there some monotony? Are they facing any problems in doing it? Do they have the training required? Or is it an attitude issue? Or are they unhappy with the manager or the supervisor? There could be many reasons for the cause of the problem. This asking the why and you know continuing uh, keep on asking why till the, till you reach a point where you actually re, uh, you know dig out the real cause. That is the how the cause and effect analysis happens. And when you list down, you actually list down every uh, the different causes and you try to solve each of those problems. That is how you approach a cause and effect analysis. There is a very beautiful diagram. It's called a fishbone diagram. So when you look up on Internet, you will find uh, Ishikawa associated with the fishbone diagram. And uh, that's a very good management tool as managers in the future. You all can uh, definitely use it for your problem solving. So with that, we come to the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for being wonderful uh, audience and giving great responses. I really enjoyed the different messages that were coming up on the chat. Thank you very much. Over to you, Janvi. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so students, now we'll take a quick break uh, and we'll be back by 1 p.m. for the next session of Cambridge. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, students. We'll be back at 1 p.m. Thank you.